Hi everyone, my name is Girish Rao. Thanks for watching this video. This video was brought to you by Finkster Academy. In this blog, I'm going to show you how to order the elements of a set. By the way, did you notice? It's a different set. Yeah, my wife tells me I made really, really bad fun jokes, so sorry about that. In Python, a set is defined as a collection of unordered elements. These elements could be integers, they could be strings, they could be floats. So given this background, it is amazing that since 2013, this question about how to sort a set, elements of a set in Python has been asked about 260,000 times. That's simply incredible. So in this blog, I'm going to show you how to sort the element of a set using the sorted method. Sorted is a built-in Python method. So I'm going to show you how to sort it. Now, one has to remember this, given this background of a set that it contains unordered elements, you're not really sorting the elements of the set. The, uh, you will see that at the end of our exercise that the elements in the set, set are still the same. They are not changed. You do not change the ordering. What happens is Python knows um, how to iterate through the elements of a set. It goes through them one by one and it will take all the elements, sort it in whatever order you want and put it into another object called the list object. So that's what it means when one says that, hey, you know, I sorted, sorted the elements of a set is Python converted, took those elements out, put them into a list, sorted them and put them into a list. So let's see how to do this. So on my left here, I have the Python interactive screen and on the right, I have my script uh, that I'm going to show you how to sort a set. So here we have a set of um, elements um, that we are going to sort. So I'll just cut and paste it for um, easy reproduction. And uh, we have the set and I'll prove to you that this is a set to the type command. So type says that, uh, you know, it is a set, you see the class set. Now um, let's see, so we'll use a sorted, next we'll use a sorted command uh, and we'll just give it the set that we have and see what comes out. So now we see here that um, <coughs> uh, my sorted elements is actually a list um, and it has this, uh, it sorted the elements um, in, in order. Uh, so let's see what the type of my sorted element is. So we see that it is a list as shown here. And what about the elements of a list? Did you see, did you notice that the sorting, yes, while the sorting is done, did you notice that there is some funkiness in the sorting? You see 11 comes before 4.92 and 4.928. So why is that? That's because the elements, these elements in the set, they are basically, they are strings. They are not really floats. Uh, and I'll prove that to you. So let's see the first element, um, you know, uh, what this first element is. Again, use the type command and we see that the sir, uh, we give it the subscript zero. So that is the first element and it says that it is a string. So indeed what we did was the, the sorted built-in function, it sorted strings, uh, not floats. Now did you notice that the elements that are in the list, the sorted list that is, they are sorted, they kind of somewhat look like they are in ascending order. But the sorting is still a little bit funky, especially if you look at the last three elements, the 11 and the 4 and the 4. They are like not sorted in proper ascending order. Well, why did this happen? This happened because if you look carefully, the elements in the set are actually strings. They are not float numbers or integer numbers. They are not really numbers. They are strings if you see the little quotes in them. So, so what happens is the sorted knows that these are uh, ASCII strings, so ASCII characters, so it sorts them using, you know, the, the ASCII numbers. So that's why the sorting is a little bit funky. Now you ask, hey, can we actually sort them as floats? Yeah, I know I gave you, you know, string, string numbers as strings, but can, 
is Python smart enough to really, um, you know, sense those as float numbers and, um, you know, sort them in ascending order? The answer is yes, um, we can. Let's see how to do that. So in this exercise, we'll use the same set as before. Um, however, we'll uh, use the key argument to specify uh, that the elements are actually floats uh, rather than strings and see what happens. So again, I'll cut and paste uh, my script um, and see how it goes. So the same set as before. We see that it recognized it as a set. And now I'm going to use a sorted built-in function and give it uh, this new thing, argument called key, and I'm going to specify to sort it that uh, the elements are indeed floats and to sort them as floats rather than strings. So let's see how that goes. All right, so see now before the 11 was somewhere around here, this 11.463 was somewhere around here. And now we see that, you know, it has sorted uh, in proper numerical ascending order uh, rather than the funky string order that we saw before. And um, notice that the elements are still strings, both in the set as well as over here. So let's see uh, if that is true. So like I said, uh, the type of my sorted elements, that's still list. So, you know, we took the set. Uh, it got converted uh, into a list, the elements um, uh, sorted, iterated through the elements uh, and it put it all into a list in ascending order. It sorted it and put it into a list. Uh, and um, the, the sorted elements, the first element, uh, all these elements are actually strings and not floats. So how the key element um, senses, helps the sorted uh, function to sense the elements as um, floats instead of strings and uh, it sorts them accordingly and now you see how clean uh, the sorting was as you had expected. It sorts them in ascending order. Now you might ask, hey, can you sort it in descending order? Yes, this is Python you're talking about. If there is an ascending order, you can be sure that there is also a descending order. Let's see how to do that. For this exercise, again, um, we'll use the same set, the set of string elements. Um, and uh, now what I'm doing over here is I'm adding another argument called the reverse argument uh, to sort it in descending order. Uh, remember I said that the original order, sorting order was ascending order. Now I'm going to do reverse, uh, the reverse of it, the descending order. And note again that the key element is still float. So we are saying that, okay, recognize those elements as float numbers rather than string. So let's see what happens. I'm going to cut the entire script in to, to uh, make it faster. All right, so cut and paste. All right, so what we see here is the same, same set as before. We have the same set. Um, proves that type proves that it is a set and what I did is I added the new uh, um, argument called reverse so reverse equals true everything else is still the same as before as the previous exercise I said my set um, is a set uh, that we have the set of string elements uh, key I said recognize key to the sorted uh, function means recognize it as floats and uh, over here, my sorted elements uh, has a list and now you see that it has sorted in proper descending order, numerical descending order. So it's 11, 4, 0 0.03 and so on, uh, right until the smallest number. Uh, type of my sorted elements is list. Um, so it returns the sorted function returns a list and the elements within the list continue to be strings for now. All right, same thing. So it's strings and uh, ends up as strings. Begins as strings and end up as strings. Now you may ask, all right, well, you know, we sorted actually string elements. What happens if my set actually has float numbers? Can you still do all the same? Well, let's see if we can do that. Oh, just note that, you know, you do not have to use a key argument in case the numbers are already floats. Um, sorted is smart enough to sense that the numbers are floats and uh, it will sort them accordingly. Let's see. 
All right, for this uh, exercise, I'll use a, a very similar script. Uh, same thing as before, the names and variable names are same as before. Just note that now they are real, flo uh, they are floating numbers, uh, not strings. Uh, so see no quotes around these numbers. So the set is a set of floats. All right, uh, same thing. So I'll cut, cut and paste my script. Everything else is the same, except that note that for the sorted function, there's no uh, key argument. All right, everything else is basically the same as before. So let's see how this, uh, I'll cut and paste it for speed. Uh, so let's see how this works. All right, so here, same set as before. It is still a set. It's a set of floating numbers, um, still a set. We sort it using the sorted function over here. Sorted again, uh, even though it's you know the elements are uh, floats, not strings. It still returns a list. As you see over here, the the type of my sorted elements is a list. Um, and what about the elements itself? Well, the elements this time, compared to the previous time, this time it's a float, as shown over here. I'm uh, using this first element, which is uh, 0 0.029 and so on. That's a float, shown by this. Uh, what about the order? Hey, look at the order. Yes, it's a proper ascending order, uh, you know, with ending in 11.46, which is the largest number uh, in this set. So everything worked out fine. Yes, you can use floats. But you just have to omit the key argument. Again, you might ask, all right, we did it. We sorted the float in ascending order. Can we do it in descending order? Well, like I said, yes, Python is very versatile. So if they provided a ascending order sorting, you can be sure that they also provided a descending order sorting. Let's see how to do that. In this exercise, uh, same thing again, I'm going to use a set of floats uh, and I'm going to show you how to sort it in reverse order. Everything else is still the same as before. The arguments I'm using reverse uh, to tell the sorted function, um, you know, to sort it in descending order. Uh, the elements within the set are floats uh, instead of strings. Uh, I'm going to cut and paste the whole thing, my script, to uh, see what happens. You know, does it sort it in descending order? Let's see. So here we see again my set uh, is a set of uh, float numbers uh, in a uh, random order. Um, it is still a set, my set is still a set. Uh, my sorted element sorted, I give it the reverse equals true to do it in descending order. Um, over here, it's still a sorted function returned a list of float numbers this time. Uh, is the order correct? Is it descending? Yep, it is descending. 11 is the biggest number, 0 0.002 is the smallest number. So it did sort it in descending order. Uh, what's the type? Uh, type of my sorted elements? Again, it's a list. So it returned a list. The sorted function returned a list. Uh, what's the type of uh, sorted? Uh, uh, the first element of sorted, uh, the type, which is this 11.463, it's, it's, it's a float. Uh, as, as I said before, all these numbers are floats now. So in this blog, you saw various ways to sort the elements of a set. Again, uh, important to note, the elements in a set are unordered. So we are not actually sorting the elements of a set. Uh, the sorted function actually iterates through each of the elements, figures out what they are, and then sorts them and puts them into a, a, a list uh, object um, in sorted order. So that, that's what we are doing. We are, we are uh, taking the elements of the set, sorted is sorting it and putting it into a list. And yes, you can sort anything. You can sort the strings. Uh, strings will be sorted in ASCII order, whereas floats will be sorted in numerical order. So you can do, you know, using the key argument, you can tell what type of element uh, you're sorting and using the reverse argument, you can change the sorting order from ascending to descending. Thanks for watching this tutorial. This tutorial was brought to you by Finkster Academy.